everyone. Today I'm going to be making this Let's Pop Some Corn table runner. In this video, I'm just going to go through the corn block that was put together. And this kit includes all the fabric that I need for the top and the binding. It's put together by Riley Blake. And I think it's a super cute, fun pattern. So let's see that put together. Let's start making this adorable corn block. You can see that I started with these strips on the side as I'm pointing in my little picture here. We start with the cream and add a green rectangle and those get sewn corner to corner. And if you'll see that I'm doing this like flying geese V pattern on my sewing machine, that's so I keep those angles straight. They have to be mirror images of each other. And this technique helps me just keep that straight in my head but I also only worked on one block at a time so that I could keep it on my table, reference it, make sure it looked right, and then go on to the next stitch. So I've got those cream ones right. Their angles are in the opposite direction. I just have to add another white square to the bottom of my green fabric. And those have to be angled the same direction on the block. So you hear, see here, I've got from top to bottom on that top block, and then same for the bottom piece. But they are mirror images of each other. See how that gets confusing? I do have footage of me getting the seam ripper out to fix one of these, so I did mess it up, even with all the precautions <laughs> that I took. <laughs> so those strips get sewn together to make that cute little husk shape. And then on the top of this is just a filler piece so that it goes the whole length of the block. So I just attached this cream rectangle to the top here and that is all done. Next I'm going through these half square triangles. So I have on my table all the pieces that I picked for this one block. You need a whole bunch of one and a half inch squares and then these cream and green triangles to attach to other triangles of patchwork. So usually you've seen in my other video that we have oversized squares that we put right sides together, draw a line from corner to corner, and then sew on either side of that line. That's not the case here. Here we cut our triangles from those squares and then sewed all the triangles together. I'm not sure why it was written that way. You, you have to work with bias seams when you do this, maybe it was easier to write. From I, I don't I have no idea, but that's the way it was written, so that's the way I did it. <laughs> and I don't know, um, I couldn't really see the benefit from that. I used a ruler to cut off the corners of my triangle, so I kind of had a seam guidance to keep that accurate and save me some trimming. But it's just. A lot of these little pieces, there weren't instructions on where to press the seams. I'm guessing it's supposed to be open the whole time, which is a lot of extra work, I think. <laughs> so yeah, you get your triangles together and then from there, you just put all those squares together. A lot of your mental energy is keeping this balanced and scrappy. There is some that I was more successful than others. There's one I had three orange pieces all in a row that I'm kind of regretting. But other than that, I mean, you just go one by one and get your rows together. For the star blocks, all I filmed was making the flying geese units. So I start with a cream rectangle, add a square to the corner, and I went ahead and just cut off that excess from the seam and I pressed that open. And so that gives us that little shape with the rhombus and the square and then the square goes on the other side and we go from the bottom corner to the middle. I messed that up in one of mine and luckily this kit comes with plenty of fabric for if you make these one-off mistakes it's forgiving and you can get another square out of that bulk but pretty simple you make these little cute flying geese, attach those to your color square, and you got a little star. And that was the majority of the construction for the corn block. I did have 
a bunch of these 1.5 inch squares and those get pieced together. But I showed you this half square triangle construction. And so I want to talk about this block for a little bit. There was no pressing instructions. Um, for this one, I pressed them open so it's nice and flat. But I got impatient and stopped doing that. And you can see it's a little more puffy on other blocks. And I specifically want to talk about this block. So on the box, this is the design that we see. And this is what was on their promotional pictures too. But you see that we get strips of fabric and this is horizontal, not vertical. And I think that got really messy with the half square triangles and this extra 1.5 inch piece and getting that all pieced together. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like there wasn't enough room here to make this vertical, but there also weren't cutting instructions. Maybe I could have made that work with like what I had I don't think there was enough there. I think I only cut off like 2.5 inches from this yardage. So, I mean, that was a little bit of a disconnect from what they intended for the pattern and what they ended up doing in production. So if I were to do this again, I think I wouldn't do all these little squares, but they're super cute. But if you just had a patchy fabric, I think that would be one good piece and then put your fabric um, as squares so along the edge and then fold that back I think that would be really cute so that's that's kind of the only change that I would make to this pattern but here's just the whole table runner all complete I just did stitch in the ditch I could use some more quilting to really hold it down but that is the whole table runner from that kit so I hope you enjoyed the little bit of tutorial, a little bit of feedback, and I, if you want to make one too, I'll put a link from where I got it uh, below in the description bar. But oh, I get so many compliments, I'm, I really want to make another one. Super cute. All right, enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. It'll let you know when I come out with new videos.